Yes, that's pretty interesting. And if that's the way that you're thinking about it, then that's not the right way to think about this. I think Justin's video. Hey, it's Amy. I'm a 4.0 graduate from Caltech, and I was valedictorian in my high school where I played three sports. Today, we're reacting to Justin Sun's How I Avoid Feeling Overwhelmed When Studying Massive Content. Massive. This was requested by my lovely subscriber, Santosh, and I'm excited because I've seen Justin Sun pop up all over my YouTube recommended, but I've never watched him before. Just from the thumbnail, though, he seems really legit, like just the vibe he gives off. But I don't know anything about him personally, so let's see his advice. By the way, my skin is kind of on fire right now. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Right so that's what we're working with. Lovely. <laughs> this is fine. Hopefully it'll get better soon. I don't know what's in the environment. So many chemicals in the water these days. Something really cool happened today. So I want to share this milestone with you guys at the end of the video. Let's go. It's Justin here. And today I feel like crap. Why? Because I've got COVID. Oh. Here, I, here I am making a video. Just like me with my eczema. See, we're so committed to helping you guys. Just can't stay away from you guys. <laughs> I've got 900 pages of this textbook I still need to study in the next three days. I certainly had to study a lot of material. Caltech was on the quarter system, so everything was go, go, go all the time. Like first day of school, suddenly there's midterms and then midterms you're like, and then there's finals again. The normal way that I've experienced that most people would think about this is that, okay, well, let's do some reverse ghosting. Right? I've got 900 pages of a textbook to get through. Honestly, about 50 pages of uh, references. So 850 pages, okay? Let's assume that across 850 pages, at least 50 pages are not going to be that useful. So be optimistic, 800 pages I'm going to need to go through. So if I've got three days, that means that I need to be doing like 270 pages roughly per day across the next Quick three maths. days. Quick maths. So if I can hit 270 pages per day across the next three days, I should be good. Now I've got roughly six hours per day blocked out for studying, which is a lot of time. And if that's the way that you're thinking about it, then that's not the right way to think about this. I tell you, man, my brain is not moving fast. Poor guy. The right way to think about it is not in terms of a linear order of a textbook, because let's say that you weren't learning it from a textbook. Let's say that you were learning it with the same knowledge, but instead of learning it through a textbook, you were learning it through someone teaching it to you. They're going to teach it to you in the way that makes the most sense for you, that makes the most sense for your brain, that you feel is the most relevant, is the easiest path for learning. What do you think are the chances that the way that this person teaches it to you is going to be the exact same order and way it's taught as this textbook? On day one, I want to build a fundamental understanding about what I'm learning. I want to have a basic but broad understanding. I'm not going to be able to do that by starting at the beginning and just working progressively in a linear order. Some concepts that allow me to understand page 120 might be presented in page 500. Maybe that would have been easier to do it in that order. That's pretty interesting. When I was at Caltech, I remember that our transport class was actually taught in different orders in the textbook. We were learning like chapters 12, 13, and then five and six, and then just jumping around all over the place. It's definitely reasonable to go around and adapt to the textbook because sometimes chapter one isn't necessary for you to understand. Okay, maybe maybe chapter one. So sometimes chapter two isn't necessarily important for you to understand chapter six. Something I think students get caught up on is that they think there is a set standard of doing things. They think that a good student means they're good at following instructions. Perhaps the valedictorian is only the best person at following directions and studying things in the same way that they're studying. No, at least in my case, I remember someone had a comment that said, I'm lying about accidentally becoming valedictorian. And they said that they were stressed a lot. I actually wasn't that stressed because I was just building a system that was more efficient and efficient effective for me. So I was working smarter, not harder. The best way to succeed in school and in life is if you feel a bigger locus of control. Don't feel that you are simply doing what other people tell you to. Don't feel that you have to do things the way they are said. In a way, I was kind of a rebel. I wouldn't want to study things just because someone told me to. I would only do it if it was important or I thought it was useful. In Caltech, I would skip class sometimes. It wasn't every course that I would skip classes for. Once I do a couple weeks and I get my feel, then I know where I can slack off a bit. When you're doing massive learning and have a tough academic schedule, I think <laughs> the, 
Oh man, your teacher's gonna hate me. I think that it's not necessarily where you think you should do the best in, but it's where you should consider where to slack off. Your time is limited. So just like Justin says, think of yourself as the coach, the teacher teaching you. Just because there's authority in your teacher or the textbook writers doesn't mean that you have to only listen to them because you are the best person who understands how you work. Okay, hopefully I struck that message home. Let's keep listening to Justin. Sorry, Justin. I'm gonna be skimming through this book. I'm gonna be picking out what feels relevant. And I'm gonna spend my time and effort on day one go through the entire 800 pages. Yes, you heard me correctly. I'm gonna go through 800 pages in a single day, but the volume of information I go through is gonna be the equivalent of maybe 75 pages, 100 pages. It's still quite a lot, but I've got six hours, remember. Totally makes sense. In fact, my economics teacher in senior year, he told us to learn how to read by skimming. Wow. So basically, if I were to read, this uh, shirt exchange receipt. I would read the first sentence in my head. I would probably skip the second. I would read the third sentence and I would only register maybe every other sentence. And that's also how you read faster on the ACT SAT reading section. The key is when you find something difficult, don't just think that maybe you're not good at it. No, you guys are very smart. You guys have a ton of potential. I'm not smarter than you guys, but it's when you feel something's difficult that you should take a step back and be like, is it just my method that's making it more difficult? Because if you have 800 pages of things, no, it's not reasonable to think you can remember every single word or absorb every single sentence. So it's better to get 10% of the material by skimming and getting the high level questions than getting 0%. And 0% is what you would get if you try to absorb every sentence sentence on the first go. So I'm going to go through roughly, let's say, 100 pages worth of actual knowledge. But that's going to be the knowledge spread within this entire book that is the most relevant for me, that makes the most sense, that's the easiest for me to understand and wrap my head around. And it's going to create a lot of anchor points. It's going to create a really strong schema, a really strong foundation for me to start working from. Justin seems like he's a legit teacher because he's using a bunch of terms that actually perfectly describe tips that I would give anchor points. Excellent. <laughs> On day two, I'm gonna go through the same 800 pages again. And this time, slightly different things are going to be more relevant for me. Different things are going to make more sense because I have more prior knowledge than I did the day before, aka today. So tomorrow, I'll have more knowledge than I do right now because I spent time to build a foundation. So do you see, as I learn more, these anchor points are allowing the later learning to become easier. So tomorrow, I'll be going through another 800 pages, but again, maybe only 100 to 200 pages worth of knowledge, but I'm able to consume more because I have more reference points. I have more anchor points. I do realize that this might not work the best for math if you're starting from an easier math concept where the later math concept depends on that. So again, always reevaluate and be your own teacher and be like, what is the best method for my current situation and goal? And on day three, I'm gonna go through the 800 pages again but this time I'm focusing on just those details that I've missed. Will I have 100% retention and high level of mastery across three days? No. That's why you shouldn't cram for an exam. But I like his approach that if you were cramming for an exam, this would probably be the way to go because even in this short period of time, he's trying to deepen the grooves the connections between neurons by reviewing the same concept. So in day one, he would review everything. And then day two, when he reviews it again, then he would already repeat hitting some things. Whereas if you go in a linear fashion, like he said, day one, you'd be doing chapters one, two, three, day two, four, five, six, but then you might run out of time to review one, two, three. And deepening those grooves and strengthening those connections between neurons is how you learn and retain information. Is it going to be enough for me to achieve my own goals of why I'm learning this? Yes, definitely. In fact, I might be able to do that in just two days. It sounds intense to go through almost a thousand pages in a single day. It's not because you're not covering every single piece of content within that space. What you're doing is you're scanning through to find the parts that are relevant. You can only hold so much, right? The human brain's got a capacity 
for how much it can handle. Once you fill that 50 to 100 pages worth of information across six, seven, eight hours, you're pretty much done. So you need to make sure that that content you are filling it with is the most relevant, the most efficient, the one that gives you the most leverage, the one that puts you in the best position so that tomorrow, even more things will make sense. I love how he's really stressing that you want to focus on the highest value areas. I talked about this so many times too. You don't want to blindly follow instructions. You want to always question things. That's why critical thinking is so important in school, in the workforce, in life. Plus, if you understand the high level concepts, then even if you forget a detail, it's easier for you to BS it. On the test, sometimes I'd run into a question and I'd have no idea. But because I have a high level understanding, I can kind of guess what the answer is. And oftentimes I get points for it. Sometimes I would embody the bad student. One time I remember asking my teacher, is this going to be on the test? And they said no. And so I just, the natural reaction was to start not paying attention. And during that time in class, I would do my homework for other classes or review concepts that did matter for the test. Only if you're not actually interested because school is also learning. Don't just do things for the grade, but think of little shortcuts you can do. Be a lazy but efficient student. With this particular textbook, I know it actually does a really great job of listing out and explaining some of the fundamental across the whole topic principles. Yes, use summaries. I love when textbooks give those little summaries. And if they bold things for me, I'm like, thank you. Even though I only covered 5% of what I needed to cover in terms of page numbers, in terms of actual knowledge, it was actually fine because I laid a firm, solid foundation. I'm amazed he did this with COVID, man. When I had COVID, I was dying. I think Justin's video, his approach, his tips are all legit. Let's look at his background. Why is he legit? Former medical do oh, doctor, full-time learning coach and consultant, TEDx speaker, top one. Whoa, who am I to review his video? <laughs> well, the fact that I'm a random kiddo on the internet reviewing a study coach's stuff just proves my point that you are just as smart as anyone else giving advice on YouTube. I've never learned how to study and I didn't really watch study tips myself. If you just take a step back and think about how you can do something better, I'm sure you can figure out better ways and smarter ways to study. This kind of gives me hope for my own videos because often I worry so much that my videos aren't cut, 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 fast dopamine hips that you guys are going to click away because you get bored and miss any potential nugget of valuable information. So that's reassuring. A lot of you guys tell me that you're struggling with procrastination, retaining information, and I'm just really curious, like because there are videos like Justin's out here, how has applying things like this actually been working for you? Like what is missing. I'd love to hear your personal experiences as always down in the comments. Thank you Santosh for the request. Something really exciting happened today. Let's cut to past Amy. I got two mysterious packages. The first one was this. This one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was not what I expected. Oh my god. Okay, I think I'm opening it from the bottom. Whoop. This is actually not the best timing because my eczema has been flaring up and videos have been telling me to avoid fragrances. But once it's all good again, I'm gonna be using this baby. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. This is my first actual bottle of perfume. Thank you, Victor and Rose. Thanks so much to my family of supporters and subscribers that I can have cool experiences like this. I know this is materialistic, but I mean, this is such, so cool. It's like a milestone and all these little things show how far my progression of a journey, even though it's the community that matters most, but oh my gosh, this makes me so happy. R risk it for the biscuit. Yeah, I look like a total dweeb opening this so unelegantly because I've never owned one of these before. Oh. So again, thank you guys so much. I don't know when this video will be released, but maybe by then we'll be at 50K. 50K people in this family. And it's all because how much 
you guys believe in me i really hope that i'm helping you guys and just know that i believe in your potential which is why i spend so much effort making these videos so you better believe in your potential too oh and about burnout this is a video about how i managed to not really get burnout you can see a whole day of how i live having fun while being productive my thought process and why that makes me not get burnout so much thank you for watching and hearts for you bye let's get into it jason sons how i f avoid <laughs> feeling overwhelmed well wow, i cannot read today okay <laughs> today we're reacting to jason sons how i avoid